been thinking about our early skateboarders. I mean, who were they? There are no books written about them. There's very little footage, very little information. Some friends told me about a Melbourne skater called Robert Francis, also known as Wedge. He was Australia's first ever pro skateboarder. The year was 1979. So what was it like in the 70s, the early 70s coming through? You know, if you wanted to skate, you had to make it happen. You know, we had pretty terrible equipment. Um, you know, it started off as a skateboard craze in 1975. There'd been a craze for hula hoops and frisbees and then it was skateboard's turn. Every kid was doing it. You know, it was probably 75 into early 76, maybe through that summer, and then skateboarding kind of disappeared and there was just a few kooks yeah. left doing it. That the solid crew that just loved it and couldn't get the solid crew, it. yeah, not the kooks. But society thought we were the kooks. You know, at the age of 16, I, I was ostracised by everybody from the grown-ups to my mates who were like, well, what are you doing that for? The first board I rode was a, uh, a Webcraft GT, so it had open cone bearings yeah. and what they call clay wheels, really, really hard and really, really slippy. If urethane hadn't been invented, the skateboarding craze would have lasted for three months and that would have been the end of it. But That's it. Yeah, then we were able to have grip so we could turn and carve. Then the boards eventually blew out to like 11 inches wide and they were massive and then they came back in narrower again, so skateboarding was kind of... Skateboards were finding their place, but then skateboarding was finding its place as well. All we wanted was a skate park or a pool or something, and we spent a lot of time looking, oh, if only, you know, we could skate that if it didn't have a gutter at the bottom of it. spillway which was like a big steep bank about five stories high and so we could surf down that because we had the urethane wheels and some dudes turned up with a movie camera other dudes there had a cap and a, a golden breed shirt thing next thing you know I was on the team and in a movie And then you were given the opportunity to go to Albany and WA. Yeah, so at the time we were skating Pimble Pool. Yep. Um, and then there was the Australian Championships in Albany. So they arranged this competition. So Johnny McGrath, who was a 14 year old at the time, brought the bus over. The fact that he was there partly validated as a championships. Adrian Jones had have come. Then it would have been the real, the, totally the real deal. So if Adrian had come, who knows what would have happened. But. Out of 500 points, I think I beat Johnny by three points, so yeah. I think there was an element of luck. Possibly I made a mistake. But anyway, I had the official title. I heard about another veteran skater, 
a local guy known as Gravel Burns. His real name, Sean Musset. I first became aware of him in, oh, I don't know, late, mid to late 70s. Yep. And he became um, a bit of a celebrity in skateboarding. And so we'd go and stay at my grandfather's and my brother and I would go and skate at Manly over the weekend. And, and you'd see and, Wedge And there. I'd see Wedge, yeah, and, and a few other guys. I was already totally passionate about skateboarding, yep. so it was my thing. And I, I had blinkers on, you know, you, all you're thinking about is your next run yep. in that half pipe at Manly. Still now people look at skateboarders and I think councils are scared of skateboarders. You know, if we put a skate park in, what's going to happen? The undesirables are going to come. They're going to come with their spray paint and their tattoos and, and you know, really awful stuff's going to happen to the community. And then when we arrive, they watch for a while and go, well, they don't have uniforms. There's no rules uh, and no governing body, but there's just unwritten etiquette. You know, you know, if someone gets hurt, everybody jumps in and helps. Yeah. Someone lands a trick, everybody's arms go up in the air. That's right. And all that stuff they said at Little Athletics and Junior Football about, oh, it's not about whether you win or lose, you know, it's about having a good time. It doesn't... I don't know that it really applies to those sports. They want to win. You know, where a skater, that, that stuff really does apply. Yeah. I've been to competitions where we forgot to have the competition. We're just having so much fun hanging out. Just having a jam, hanging out. Yeah. You guys can publish a photo within two milliseconds of the trick getting done, you know? And we had American skateboard magazines, and I think that was, every, like, across the board, my generation, you ask anyone, and I'd be surprised if they didn't say they just literally would sit outside the news agents waiting for it to come. You know, they just we just could not wait to get that next magazine because it was the, it was the only direction we had, especially if you were in... Uh, you know, outside a metropolitan area. We met up with some old school skaters at the bowl. 70s and 80s skate legends like Adrian Jones, Dave Sheffield and John Bergarts. They're all in their 50s and 60s now, but age hasn't stopped them yet. the old boys from Pinball Pool. Yeah, Adrian Jones was there, you know, he was, he was, you know, like one of the key guys at Pinball Pool. He's got more tricks in his bag now than, than he had when he was 19. He's like 58, he's, he's a freak, nicest cat. Yeah. I migrated from Melbourne to Sydney, got in the car, drove the 600 miles. He worked my first week in the skate shop and said to the boss, you know, where to do to skate? And he said, oh, the boat ramp. So I found out where that was. Got myself to the boat ramp and I chatted to this kid called Adrian. He said, I don't know where there's a pool. I said, well, I've got a car, let's go. So we went to this pool and um, all we'd ever wanted was to skate a pool or skate a skate park. Yep. So, and we'd seen the Californian pools in a you know, skateboarder magazine. And so we've gone, right, well, here we are. We've spent all these hours drying out the pool. Let's have a go. And we couldn't do it. It was really difficult to ride. We didn't know how to ride vertical. And the bottom of that pool was cold hard, usually a bit damp when you hit it from, you know, eight and a half feet up, you went straight to the bottom and just... We had yeah. this thing that we'd wanted all our lives and it was there right there in front of us and we had to, we were just learning how to ride it. And really pushing the limits, teaching ourselves how to learn new tricks. Yeah. You know, how to look at it and go, oh, that thing's impossible. And then we conquered it. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we learned how to do the impossible. so nice to know that there's just still people that just live and breathe skateboarding. Like, you would just not go anywhere without your skateboard, would you? No, yeah, and I, I literally have it permanently super glued to yeah, my... If it's it. not glued to my feet, it'll be glued under my arm. Yeah, and I was, I was that kid in 1985, 86, 87, 88. I was that kid on the skateboard in the main street of Newcastle.